Hello and welcome back to the Fusion 360 YouTube channel. In this quick tip, I'll show you the DXF import utility for Fusion 360 and how it improves the DXF import process with tools like closing open profiles, automatic extrusion, and more. Fusion 360 has a wealth of built-in translators to help you collaborate effectively regardless of other software used. But not every design comes from a 3D model, especially when working with legacy data or customer files where their process includes 2D design. To better support the wide variety of workflows across the industry, we built the DXF import utility. This is a free add-in available on the Fusion 360 App Store. Once installed, run the DXF importer from the add-in list and check Run on Startup so it launches every time you use Fusion 360. Now that it's running, DXF import utility appears in the Tools section of the toolbar in the Design Workspace. Click on the icon and it will prompt you to select the DXFs you'd like to import from your hard drive. Next, a dialog box appears where you can customize the import settings. The first two settings will define how the DXFs are placed on the plane, how far apart they are spaced, and how many rows to arrange the parts within. Then there are several options to customize the rest of the import. Some notable options are closing sketch gaps within the specified tolerance, which helps address poor DXF quality and gives a result with a closed profile, automatic extrusion of each closed profile, and merging the various DXF layers onto a single sketch. Note that you can also assign a material if you choose to extrude each profile. This is key for downstream nesting workflows where each part is placed on a sheet based on its physical material. There is also a checkbox to save your settings for future imports. Once you click OK, the DXFs will start appearing in the Fusion 360 canvas and placing themselves based on the part spacing and number of rows. If you opted for extrusion, Fusion 360 will attempt to extrude the first sketch layer to the specified thickness. DXFs with multiple layers might extrude better if you select Combine to Single Sketch, but this could also cause problems on solid parts with bend lines. Based on the source of your DXFs, export settings, and a variety of standards across the industry, you may need to play around with the settings to find what works best. Once the DXF import utility is done, you should see your resultant sketches, sketch, or bodies all inside of Fusion 360 and the timeline populated with any imports and extrudes. If something went awry with how a part was extruded, you can simply edit the timeline feature and make sure it's extruded properly. Whether you choose to extrude each profile or not, the DXF import utility organizes the resultant sketches or bodies into individual components in the browser. The component is given the name of the original DXF for clarity, and the major benefit here is that this organization is just what is needed for arrange or nesting. What used to be a handful of commands to import and organize DXFs is now one command that can handle multiple DXFs at once. One final note on DXF import is that DXF text can be imported as fully editable single line text. Check the import text box and choose which font you'd like the text to import as. When looking at the layers in the resultant sketch, the text layer contains the DXF text, and it can be edited to reflect any necessary changes or updates. The other slightly hidden feature of the DXF import utility is that it can close gaps in existing sketches. In the drop-down menu, select Close Sketch Gaps, and all you need to do is select the sketch with gaps to close, set the sketch gap tolerance, and click OK. So if you're importing other formats, or have an older model with some sketch gaps, you can easily create closed profiles, and now you're ready to design, arrange, nest, machine, and more. A direct link to the DXF import utility on the Fusion 360 App Store is included in the description. As always, we look forward to hearing your feedback. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, Subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time.